nightclub shootout the other night. You did that. Um, look, look, here we go. They're trying to help you sons, man. Look. To do Two high school students from Brandon got a chance to represent Mississippi at the 61st annual U.S. Senate Youth Program. Josh Bowman and Nadia Harden were among 104 students from all 50 states who took part in this week-long event. You can see they met Senator Roger Wicker and Senator Cindy Hyde-Smith and several other leaders to learn more about what a future in public service looks like. This program gave me the opportunity to be able to speak with a deputy. Uh, the opportunity to grow up and call all these gliders racist and talk about how systematic institutions held you back. She held up some sandbags. Back. Yeah, but she's going to end up on that pink peen, though. Oh, yeah, definitely. But here's the thing, though. Look at look at, look at this. Look at her start. She's here. She's in the building. You are in the building. Whatever you talk about racism, they let you in the building. You in this summit with these other black girls and all these other teens, y'all, they let y'all participate in this shit. This fucking guy, I don't know, he might be a Patel, but all these fucking teams from all over the country, and you in there. And we got and, and I'm telling you, Gladys, in 20 years, all you're gonna hear out her mouth is about how racist y'all are. This program gave me the opportunity to be able to speak with a deputy um ambassador for Australia, actually, and I got to ask him some questions about foreign policy and what's important to him. And that was really inspiring, getting to know that African Americans such as myself are in these positions. We got to go to a lot of places that most people normally don't go. Um, for instance, we're going to go to the Pentagon on Friday. That's going to be super fun. And um, it's been just really informative about the different lessons that these speakers have to offer. Bowman and Harden will receive $10,000 college scholarships from the nonprofit Hearst Foundation, which funds this program. $10,000 college scholarships. You know, uh, can I ask you something real quick? She's talking to somebody from Australia, right, about an African-American woman working. Is she talking about an American that claims African-American, or is she talking about a black person from Australia, which is an indigenous Indian of sorts? You know the Aboriginal people. I don't know, man. Honestly, I have no fuck. I have no clue, man. Well, there's Sudanese know. in Australia now too, so there's Africans in Australia. Yeah, so definitely. Um, but this is she in the building, man. She's in the building, man. Ten thousand dollar scholarship. Get to go all over the country. Get to rub elbows. Think about the connection she can make in this room. All these so, fucking people. Brandon, Mississippi, is a suburb. Uh, east of uh, Jacksonville with 79.69% uh, white and 18% black. And it's oh. got an 83 livability score. And uh, <laughs> let's put it this way. Uh, <laughs> cost of living is a B. Oh, Crime God. is an A+. Plus. Crime is an A+. Plus? Oh, so she, her parents probably left Jackson, moved to Brandon to the, the Scott Adams method got out of Jackson, 84% black Jackson, moved to 79% Brandon, and look at poof. Look at what happened. Poof, just like that. They got a future senator and shit. Salute to um GG Ryder, man. He says, um, at Savage, Jared Taylor was talking about crazy virtuous gliders during abolition days, self important virtue via self hatred. Neurotic as fuck. Um, this girl ain't no fucking Aborigine, man. Um, Aborigines, uh, <laughs> you know, fucking, Bill done fucking sidetracked the shit. Got Bill, no Bill, Bill's trying, though. Yes, it's just, uh, well, no, because oh, I, I didn't know which one she's talking that's to. The, that's I, right. think he's the, make any sense. I think he was the ambassador to Australia yeah, that they were talking to. Yeah. Right, and she said that it was great to see that African American employment and yada yada. It's like, bitch, are, is he African American? This guy that's running shit in Australia, or is he Aboriginal? Let's Black do person. Mobile. It could man. be a Sudanese. Mobile local news, man. The fucking Let's ADD be... just works like that, so. Mobile very much. Well, new from us tonight, for the third time, a suspect in Mobile will not be getting out of jail 
on bond under Anaya's law. Now, this fairly new law was created to keep violent offenders behind bars. And tonight, a judge agreeing that testimony revealed in an Anaya's law hearing against John McCarroll Jr., it's enough to keep him locked up until trial. Fox News' Shelby Myers has the story for us. And Shelby, prosecutors say McCarroll is wrapped up in two murder for hires and mistaken identity shootings in two different Mobile nightclubs. Yeah, that's right, Byron. Mobile police testifying today that John McCarroll Jr. wasn't the trigger man in the paparazzi club shooting that injured four or the bank nightlife club fatal shooting, but he was the man calling the shots. I ain't do that man. They just need somebody to blame. I ain't open fire, shoot no gun. Man. They just need somebody to blame. Part of that statement from John McHero. Mass if I had that murder. hairline, I'd be mad too. Serial killers um, in your midst. Serial killers in the Sun community, man. Running rampant. No news about this. Nothing on the national level. Only on the local level. If you ain't fucking watching the Mobile News at fucking 6 o'clock, you ain't going to know shit about this. The shots. I ain't do that man. They just need somebody to blame. I ain't open fire and shoot no gun, man. They just need somebody to blame. Part of that statement from John McHero Jr. on his way to Metro months ago might be right, according to today's testimony. In an Anaya's Law hearing, evidence presented by Mobile Police and prosecutors say McCarroll wasn't the trigger man, but he was behind two shootings at two Mobile clubs. Witnesses say multiple shots were fired inside. Police say McCarroll and two others offered to pay Reginald Fluker Fluker $20,000 to kill a man. According to testimony, Fluker told police he fired four to five times at the guy he thought was the target, but it turned out to be an innocent man named Derek Shavers. $20,000. Professionalism, that's all I got to say. $20,000 for him to kill the wrong dude and then snitch. $20,000 to a hitman for him to kill the wrong guy and then snitch. Talk it's like a day, this is a, this a fucking Dave Chappelle sketch. <laughs> you pay 20,000 smackaroos in a we are damn near in a recession for to your hitman to hit the wrong guy and then tell on you. My god, and then he killed this guy. This guy's fucking had nothing to fucking do with. He just at the fucking club. And he's some sun man's pumping bullets into him. He don't know what the fuck is going on. Five times at the guy he thought was the target, but it turned out to be an innocent man named Derek Shavers. And then in November at Paparazzi in downtown Mobile, a detective testified McCarroll gestured at Darius Rouser to kill another rival. But instead, four innocent victims were hit by bullets in the packed club. Jesus Christ! On a gesture. So then you get you you uh, you pay this guy. I think I think as he said, um, murder for hire. So you get this guy to kill somebody, somebody else, and he shoots four innocent people. O for five. <laughs> o for five. Salute. Jesus. Right. This is the stand in a nutshell. This is the stand in a nutshell. That life doesn't matter. White people, that Black Lives Matter shit, the fact that y'all got those signs still in your fucking yard in places like Tacoma and in Seattle and shit like that in Portland and in fucking D.C. Gliders still got in their shops. They still got Black Lives Matter signs in their shops. Black lives do not matter to the people who's been saying that shit. Black people don't give a fuck about black lives. Told police he fired four to five times at the guy he thought was the target, but it turned out to be an innocent man named Derek Shavers. And then in November at Paparazzi in downtown Mobile, a detective testified McCarroll gestured at Darius Rouser to kill another rival. But instead, four innocent victims were hit by bullets in the packed club, including a woman who was shot in the neck and paralyzed. Judge Zogby ultimately granted. 
including a woman who was shot in the neck and paralyzed. From so the you done neck down. Paralyzed one woman. You done killed this fucking brother. And you still haven't get, hit none of the ops. This is why these guys need to be under the jail. And this is why all you um, blackity black pro blacks that's trying to make the laws easier for these guys and criminal justice and shorter sentences and bail reform and all this bullshit. All of y'all should burn in fucking hell. Okay, uh, so Anaya Blanchard was You're going to get into that next. I'm going to get that. I'm going to play that next. And four innocent victims were hit by bullets in the packed club, including a woman who was shot in the neck and paralyzed. Judge Zogby ultimately granting Anaya's law in this case to keep McCarroll in jail until his trial. Mobile County District Attorney Keith Blackwood sending us this statement, saying in part, quote, the ruling today shows that Anaya's law is working by locking up violent accused offenders who serve as a threat to our citizens until their trial. McCarroll's attorney says the new law isn't fair to his client. The hearing that we just had was full of hearsay and speculation. Under Anaya's law, the rules of evidence do not apply. And therefore, what you heard in there would be shut down or wouldn't be admitted in an actual trial. So if it wasn't for a Nas law, homeboy would be back on the streets right now. Now, Darius Rouser, who's the accused trigger man at Paparazzi, is also charged with shooting two people at the Beltline Walmart in December. Jesus Christ. Never ends. He'd be back on the streets planning another failed hit. Jesus. Yo, yo, man, we're going to get him this time. We're going to get him into Walmart real top. Keep it 100. Oh my God. Darius Rouser, who's the accused trigger man at Paparazzi, is also charged with shooting two people at the Beltline Walmart in December. Plus, he's accused of killing a man at a casino in Mississippi. He's Jeez. already being held without bond in Alabama under Anaya's law. In the studio and tonight. If it wasn't for Anaya's law, he would be out on bond. Let's see who Anaya is, man. So he uh, got like seven bodies, maybe something like that. And black Biden. people want this shit. This is the criminal justice they talking about. That's what they talking about. This shit. Let these motherfuckers back out. This is crazy. Anaya, man. Let's learn about Anaya, man. Shout out to Anaya, man. This week's 48 Hours investigates the killing of a top-ranked UFC fighter's stepdaughter after her disappearance in 2019. College student Anaya Blanchard was last seen at an Alabama gas station, and her alleged killer was a man with a long arrest record out on bond. <laughs> a long arrest record out on bond. That's what... Oh, failed that's, liver, looks like. That's what killed this... This girl was beautiful. Um... Had her whole life ahead of her. She was last seen at an Alabama gas station, and her alleged killer was a man with a long arrest record out on bond. Now her parents, who had to wait weeks to learn Anaya's fate, are fighting for justice. CBS News special correspondent James Brown spoke with the family. These are the last images of Anaya Blanchard at a gas station in Auburn near her apartment. Just the worst feeling ever. Anaya's mother, Angela Harris, and her stepfather, UFC fighter Walt Harris, were frantic. We drove my truck in backwoods. We were all in people's yards. Anaya's car, which was badly damaged, was found 55 miles away. Investigators say a blood-soaked passenger seat and a bullet hole in the door. Tell the story of what happened to Anaya that night. So traumatizing to think about what she went through. Authorities believe Anaya ran into Ibrahim Yazid when she stopped at the gas station. Think about all the, this is why I tell y'all, when y'all go to a gas station, you see some men hanging out there. Just don't even get out your car. Just drive to another one, man. I've been in that gas station. 
you've been in this gas station. Now they mm-hmm. hang, they hang out out front. Uh, no, not really. But this day, she she was unlucky. She ran into this fucking guy. Yazid is a man with a lengthy arrest record, and he had been charged earlier that year with robbing and beating two people. In spite of those serious charges, Yazid was free on bond. Anaya's college roommate, Sarah O'Brien. Now, here's the thing, though. Both of these people in this picture would be at a protest for criminal justice reform. Both these people, if you ask them, should criminals stay in jail until they have trial, they both would say no. Both of these people, if you ask them uh, what's the worst, biggest thing facing black people right now, they would say systematic institutional racism. So just for the record, both these people, a fucking biracial chick who got to go extra hard with the woke shit because she half black, and a white girl who's friends with a biracial chick who can't really say what she feels about anything because the black girl going to accuse her of rape, beating her down with the blackly black shit all day. Charges. Yazid was free on bond. Anaya's college roommate, Sarah O'Brien. How is this person free to walk into a gas station? How is he in the same gas station as my best friend? But Yazid maintains his innocence. The Harrises were committed to facing Yazid whenever he appeared in court. You see him, Mr. Yazid, looking back at you guys. Walt, I remember sh- shaking. I wanted to climb. Yeah, he looking back at them. He like, damn, that's so fucking um, aggressive, man. That's an aggressive guy, man. He staring the face, staring the parents. Definitely down. no resemblance to a gorilla you he, here. You think he's straight off a boat? <laughs> he staring the parents. He's straight down. out of a cage somewhere. That's aggressive, dude. Yeah, but he don't know who he's staring at. To be honest, nah, he you know, you know the you. But I'm saying like that dude's a UFC face. fighter. Do you think that dude want any smoke with fucking Walt Harris? He don't care about that guy, man. He would shoot him. Yeah. You see him, Mr. Yazid, looking back at you guys. Some men don't don't think about all that strong and karate and all that shit. Some men don't think about that like that, like y'all gliders, because you're gonna fight and shit. We just gonna shoot your ass, man. And so you won't be you won't throw a roundhouse kick and I'm gonna throw a roundhouse bullet straight to your fucking head and the fight will be over. Or just attack like and that. attack. Walt, I remember sh- shaking. I wanted to climb across the barricade. It took all of Walt's training the in smirk? the ring and you see the smirk, I'm smirking at him. The Angela's steady hand to keep him from ripping into Yazid. She grabbed me and she said, "Just breathe." And I just started trying to hear her voice. Angela, how did you stay composed? I wanted him to know that I'm representing my daughter you don't scare me and that i'm not going anywhere we're right here and we're going to represent our daughter and we're going to fight wow james brown joins us now jb good morning we're all here wondering how yazid was even out and in that gas station at that time uh what actions are the harris family uh taking now co-tailing on that very question there tony right now there's broad political and legislative support for okay so the the nas law got passed but here for the record she wasn't talking to him. She curved him. That girl, um, because the rest of the story, I, I followed it when it happened. She curved homeboy. Homeboy was trying to holler, and she curved him. She ain't. She like just kept walking. She didn't even say nothing. She kept walking, and so he got mad, and he like strangled her and fucking shot her, and then took her somewhere and probably raped her while she was dead or some shit. I don't know, but. Mm, mm, mm. Back to Mobile, man. <laughs> no yeah, we haven't even got to the damn waterboard yet. <laughs> Back to Mobile, this man. This part of the Gulf South is like well, a goddamn black hole. <laughs> so what it what it uh, did was Anaya's law expanded the exemption uh, for bail being allowed to include arson, burglary, domestic violence, aggravated child abuse, assault, robbery, kidnapping, human trafficking, rape, sodomy, sexual torture, terrorism, and murder. Mm. Not just capital murder. 
Okay, good, 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 good. Shout out to Naya. She gave her life, man, but it's at least at least at least something came of it, man. At least something came of it, man. She man. Um yeah, he for him to look back at them parents, that makes me hate him, man. To look back at their parents like that, man. Them parents like that. That shit's crazy, man. Um Well, it's a Fox 10 News exclusive. Stolen guns, a robbery, a death threat, and gang affiliation. Investigators telling Fox News it all led to a deadly officer-involved shooting last week in Mobile. Cordell Jones shot several times when a Mobile police SWAT team served a search warrant at a house on Charles Street. But police weren't looking for Cordell. They wanted his brother. Tonight, we've uncovered new court documents showing just why that SWAT team was called in to arrest Jason Jones. So now the SWAT team is in trouble for trying to arrest some fucking thugged out son, man. And, and now we'll see black people out in the streets talking, complaining, and being incensed. Now we'll see black people emotional. Now we'll see black people asking for cameras and mics to be put in their face so they can speak their piece. Fox News' Ariel Mallory has those documents, and Ariel Police Chief Paul Prine talked a little about this last week, but those court documents have a lot of new details, right? Yeah, that's right, Byron. The information laid out in these court documents spell out why officers wanted to get Jason Jones off the streets. Tonight, we find out what led to this huge show of force at a home on Charles Street last Tuesday. An MPD the color of his skin. <laughs> Street last Tuesday. An MPD SWAT team was there to execute an early morning search warrant. Officers looking for